All right, well, I'm back again, and I believe that we have Carissa Meagers and Olivia Stevenson on with us. But I, I don't quite know where they're at, so <laughs> I know they're here. I'm here. <laughs> Hi there, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? <laughs> so good to finally meet you. You too, thank you for having me. Hi. <laughs> Oh, there's Olivia up there. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, for everybody who is still with us, uh, we now have a bit of a presentation for you. We're uh, happy to have Carissa Meager and Olivia Stevenson to come and share with us. So um, we're going to share a video of their work. But first, I'd like to ask Carissa just to tell us a little bit of what we're going to see while I go into my screen share. Yeah. Um, so... I uh, adopted North Hanger Abbey um, for Sacramento Theater Company's 75th anniversary season uh, this last year. And um, so you'll see actually at first a short trailer from that production. And then following that sort of a slideshow montage where I sort of speak about my view of, of um, the piece, how I kind of got into writing it, what my choice my choices were in regards to, you know, adapting Jane Austen for the stage, how I chose to kind of take my uh, stab at it, I guess. And then from there, our lovely Olivia, who starred in the production as both Catherine Moreland and Jane Austen. Uh, it was a dual role, which I explain a little in the video. Uh, she got, we got together over Zoom and she recorded, went back, revived her role and recorded a lovely little monologue from the piece um, and even managed to throw together a nice little costume, um, which was, I was very excited about in COVID times, we did not have access to our original pieces. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's all kind of explained in there, but that, that's what <laughs> we'll be watching. All right, well, let's take a look. Northanger Abbey, my first novel. It's so young, not nearly refined. As it is you, Jane, as I once knew you. A young girl, in all these years when I have learned from your presence most, this is the book I take up. I've often felt closest to you, my dear sister, when I read of the unlikely heroine Catherine Morland. When I walk about Bath with her, when I go on the most dangerous adventures through the Abbey, running alongside her at every twist and turn, it is loved, Jane. Loved. People all over the world read your books. And when they are asked, they proudly announce that they are reading a novel by Jane Austen. You are loved, Jane. I'm Carissa Marr, playwright of Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. I was particularly motivated to adapt Northanger Abbey because of its youthfulness and humor. Catherine Moreland's ability to allow her imagination to run away from her is such a universal experience of childhood, and for some, adulthood too. This experience seemed true for Jane as well, which is really where my structure came from. I love that Northanger features some of Jane's darker, more fantastical side, a side a lot of people might not be aware of or associate her work with. You can see in it the teenage Jane Austen, who once wrote in her journal about children biting off their mother's fingers out of hunger. You see a young, unrefined Jane, much like Catherine Morland, her heroine. The other element that really inspired me was Jane's own interruptions to the narrative, suddenly shifting to the first person and addressing her readers directly. This is what drew me to include Jane Austen as a character in the piece. While this certainly has been done before, I took the concept of Jane as a narrator and turned it on its head a bit. The play begins with Jane's favorite brother, Henry Austin, searching for Jane in an abandoned theater. They are in a sort of transitional space between worlds, a limbo of sorts. When they are reunited, he delivers to Jane the collection of her published novels. 
Jane passed away before all were published, and her brother Henry was a particular champion of her writing. When she sees Northanger has finally been published, she is shocked and a little embarrassed by the youthful writing. Her brother Henry insists on its merit, and the two of them are suddenly thrust into the story of Northanger Abbey, playing siblings, Catherine and James Moreland. However, Jane often steps out of her role of Catherine to speak directly with the audience about her thoughts on characters, society, and, of course, writing. Olivia Stevenson originated the dual role of Jane and Catherine beautifully, and she will now recreate a short section from the play in which Catherine stops the scene to become Jane, and Henry Austin, Jane's brother, must drag her back into the action of the story lest she get too carried away with her rant. You do so? Yes. Have you read it? I finished it early last night. Oh, I have got to the Black Veil. I could not tell you what is behind the Black Veil for the world. We had a while to know. Oh, yes, quite. Oh, but do not tell me. I know it must be a skeleton. Oh, I am delighted with the book. I should like to spend my whole life reading it. How happy Catherine was to finally have someone with whom to discuss her novels. Yes, novels. For I will not adopt that ungenerous custom so common with novel writers of scarcely ever permitting their heroines to read. Should one of those author's heroines accidentally take up a novel, she is sure to turn over its insipid pages with disgust. Oh, our novels have afforded more pleasure than any other type of literature in the Jane, world. <clears throat> there seems almost a general wish to undervalue the labor of the novelist and of slighting their works, which only have genius, wit, and taste to recommend them. <laughs> novels? Ugh! I seldom look into novels such as the common cant, and, um, oh, what are you reading, miss? Oh, it is only a novel, replies the young lady, while she lays down her book with affected indifference or momentary shame, <laughs> or, or, <laughs> in short, only some work in which the greatest powers of the mind are displayed. Had the same young lady been engaged with a volume of history, how proudly would she have produced the book and told its name? History, that the substance of its papers so often consists of unnatural characters and topics of conversation which no longer concern anyone living. A person of taste would much rather be reading a novel. <laughs> In short, dear Isabella, Udolfo is indeed a fine novel. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. That was just delightful. <laughs> First of all, let me apologize for mispronouncing your name. I did not do my due diligence on that one. <laughs> Don't would ever guess it. You're fine. <laughs> uh, but we do have time for one quick question for the both of you. D throughout this process of creating this sh show, this is one of my general open-ended questions. What um, one thing perhaps surprised or delighted you the most in the process? Hmm. Olivia, if you want to go first. I, that's it. Adapting it like mm. yeah. Um, I mean, I'll speak from the actor's perspective, of course, but um, because I didn't do any of the beautiful adapting. But you know, for me, I think initially I was so concerned about making Jane and Catherine super different from each other, um, so that the audience would understand the conceit and be able to follow that way. But you know, the more research I did, 
Um, cause I really, I initially, I dove in with research, you know, that I was like, find out as much as I can about Jane, read Chris's script as much as I can read Northanger as many times as I can. Um, but it became very clear to me that actually so beautifully, I didn't need to worry about making them super different. I think that's why Northanger is actually so special is that really unlike any of her other books, um, Jane is so incredibly like pregnant in that text and Carissa, Carissa's choice to bring Jane and Catherine as a dual role um, made complete sense. Um, so I think for me, the biggest surprise was just knowing that I, it was just about really telling the story and making the relationships clear and emphasizing that rather than, than getting locked into these two women that I'm playing and actually they're very similar and that's so beautiful and special actually. Thank you, Carissa. Yeah, uh, uh, sort of similar because obviously that was sort of my conceit and um, I hesitated because uh, when I first was asked, uh, I was asked kind of generally, will you ad adapt a Jane Austen for us? And it was very open and um, Northanger was suggested, but um, it was kind of up to me which one to adapt. And so um, for the commission, and so I, I read Northanger, reread it, and I was like, yes, this one right away because it's so theatrical and it's so comedic. And that's the part where I think, and, and like I said in the, in the video, there's darkness in it. And I think a lot of general audience members, not the crew I'm talking to right now, but audience members who might not know Jane Austen, showing up for Jane Austen piece and seeing horror and humor and and things that they might not ever realize are there. Um, so I think really exploring the, the Jane Catherine crossover and um, especially how, when I was reading it, I was so struck when Jane would switch into first person and say, I, you know, that whole novel rant is basically pulled out and cut down actually about five pages. Um, and, and I just thought, I have to put this in. This has to be part of it. And I think Jane is there. And the more I read about Jane and realized her favorite brother was Henry and here, Henry Tilney, Henry Austin, I just thought, whoa, there is so much of her um, in this. I think that she would have behaved the same way in both. She was not um you know as refined in her youth and didn't have as much experience and so it just it all just kind of came alive from there sorry that was maybe a little long <laughs> no that's that was wonderful you're getting a lot of love and respect from the folks in sacramento who got to see the production in the chat so um they're they're here to support you and to say hi um but i want to thank you both for coming on and sharing this work with us and for putting the time into that work that you did carissa uh, it's a truly a lovely opportunity to see work that is happening around the nation that we don't always get access to. And it's also a little piece of how the world, uh, the Austin world has gone a little farther than she probably anticipated than her little bit of ivory. So thank you both for coming on and for sharing this with us. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Elisa Chirago of San Diego, who's gonna start our Jasna social time. So thank you all again for coming on and uh, participating and uh, for listening to our discussion on Theatrical Austin. Elisa.